Talks Processes in Julia, a talk by me, Dean Markwick. In this talk, I'll explain what a Hawks process is and the mathematics behind them, and also how we use them in Julia with hawksprocesses.jl. I'll then move on to giving some examples, both in a high frequency finance and a sociological application. So what is a Hawks process? It is a self-exciting point process where each event increases the probability another event happens. We can view this as an intensity that increases after each event and it decays if no event further happens. Mathematically, we can write this intensity as three components. A background rate, indicated by the orange line here, which is the probability a event occurs randomly. The kappa rate, which is the excitation parameter, which controls how much the probability increases with each event. And then a kernel GT, which is the decay of this excitation and decays over time. In my package, hawksprocesses.jl, you can use Julia to work with the different aspects of a Hawks process and use things such as the intensity, likelihood, simulate Hawks processes, and even infer the parameters using the Bayesian inference method. You benefit from the speed and composability of Julia and can easily integrate this with all other packages. So let's start with looking at an intensity. We define the background rate as 0.5 the kappa rate is 0.5 as well, and then the kernel as an exponential distribution, also parameterized by 0.5. We then create a time grid between 0 and 10 in 0 0.1 increments, and two test events at 3 and 6. Passing all these parameters into the intensity function and plotting the result gives this graph on the right, and we can see these increases in the intensity over time with each event. If we wanted to simulate a Hawks process, we'd use the same parameters and pass them into the simulate function. And this gives us an array of events that would come from such a Hawks process, indicated here with the red circles. And overlaying the intensity, we can see periods of high intensity where there's lots of events and lower intensity where there's fewer events. If we wanted to infer the parameters of an unknown um, array of event times, we can use the fit function. And in this case, we're fitting to some simulated events using the method where we're going through and classifying each event as either a background or a child event, and then using the number of background events to infer the background rate, the number of child events to infer kappa, and when the child events occurred relative to their parent to infer the kernel GT, which is the exponential distribution as previously said. Given these new parameters, we then reclassify and repeat the process until the chains converge. In this example, we get estimated parameters of around 0.5, which is close to the true values set previously. If instead you wanted to use a uh, maximum likelihood method, we can just pass the likelihood function straight into the optimize from the opt-in package and use this to come up with the best fitting parameters. And again, we get parameters similar to the true ones from the simulation. This is quicker than the Bayesian method. So if you have a lot of events that you need to fit a Hawks process to, this might be preferable. I've created a Pluto notebook that is hosted at the above URL where you can explore these Hawks processes and all the functions in my package to really find out how the parameters can change the properties of a given Hawks process. Now, moving on to the examples. Hawks processes are commonly used in finance and one such uh, way we can use them is to model the microstructure noise. Now this microstructure noise comes from measuring the volatility at different timescales. When we move to a finer and finer timescales, so a shorter and shorter time period, we find that this volatility explodes and it becomes a very large number. I've calculated the realized volatility for a futures contract on the right, and then we can see as we're moving into these smaller timescales, it is getting larger and larger and following this typical exploding pattern. And this is coming from the underlying structure in the market and the information latencies between different participants, the bid ask bounce, and discrete prices at small timescales because it can only move up or down in set increments. All of these will contribute to movements in the price that may look like volatility at smaller timescales than they would at the larger timescales. So a Hawks process can replicate this behavior and we do so by setting up a model where the prices move up and down in jumps. So the price consists of all the times it moves up minus all the times it moves down on a given timescale. And these jumps come in as a Hawks process. The self-exciting bit is where an uptick increases the probability of a downtick and vice versa. So there's this mean reversion behavior that we're implying. And then when we fit this type of model to the data, we find that mu is 0 
kappa 0.75 and beta of 0.2. And this means that we've got a 75% chance of causing a tick in the opposite direction given a tick happens. And this will happen roughly five seconds afterwards. So a very practical effect that anyone uh, using these high frequency models would see some observable results. For the full process and data and uh, modeling techniques, you can read my blog post uh, where I replicate this modeling microstructure noise with mutually exciting point processes in Julia using my Hawks processes package. What about in sociology? Well, in a chapter of my PhD, I was looking at whether terror attacks are self-exciting. And this is essentially trying to understand whether an individual terror attack will increase the probability of another attack in the same country. In the data set, we have multiple different countries, so we've got two choices. We can either fit an individual Hawks process to each country, such that they have their own parameters, or we could fit one Hawks process to all countries where they'll be sharing parameters, so there'll just be one background kappa and kernel at the end. And this is achieved using the hierarchical fit from my package. If we look at the United Kingdom as an example, we can see that those two different models produce slightly different results, but the overall conclusion with Kappa being higher than 0.9 is that these terror attacks are very self-exciting. Now, how do we know whether that model is a good model for the data? Well, we can do something called the time change residual theorem, where we're looking at how the events line up to a implied theoretical amount using these fitted intensity functions. For our null model, we're gonna be considering a Poisson process without any excitations, so the most simple model. And we can see that actually this null model is quite far away from the theoretical best line, whereas the individual and the hierarchical models are closer to the theoretical best line, indicating that yes, again, these terror attacks are self-exciting. Now, practically, this means we can view the uh, intensity profile of a given country and start to think about different threat level boundaries where the intensity might cross. And this might mean that we're in a higher probability of having a terror attack and thus the threat level should be raised. So in the case here, this highest level is the critical threat level boundary, which might be similar to, say, the DEFCON 1 level that the United States uses. And again, if you would like to see more details of this model and the process of fitting these different types of uh, models, you can look at my blog post here. So hopefully now you've got an idea of what a Hawks process is and how that they can be applied to lots of different things. And also how Julia is well suited to these types of problems, given that it's fast and easy to integrate with other packages. You could switch out the kernel to a different distribution, such as say the log normal using the distributions package, or you could even adapt the nonlinear uh, the background rate to a nonlinear background rate using Gaussian processes. Or finally, maybe consider a marked Hawks processes where Kappa now depends on another variable. All these can be easily done given the composability of Julia. Thanks for listening to my talk. You can see the package hosted at GitHub at this URL. And if you'd like more from me, have a look at my website or follow me on Twitter. Thank you.